Tainuk is not looking for 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 a an opportunity to have Tainuk. Tainuk is a is an is a reality all in itself. Tainuk is the life element itself. And at a higher level, this is the godly element itself. And that is totally self containing and self satisfactory. It is like an, an atzmi. Then, in addition to that, there is another element totally. And that is that the taino can be drawn to the point where, where the content the, 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 the content of the Taino can be ultimately revealed. That is where Chochmah comes in. Now, the whole concept of content within the Taino is, um, is, um, is very, it's, it's very um, uh, subtle. Because Tainuk does not have content. And the Tainuk is not dependent on any kind of circumstance and on the content, on satisfying some, satisfying some pursuit. That is not, that is not Tainuk. Tainu has content or doesn't have content? Both. I'm not going to answer. This is, basic, this is basic Havana. So is it fair to say that Tainu, although it's not pursuing anything, but it has already arrived at that place? It's Tainu, it's Etsem, it has it already, as opposed to pursuing it. Is that a correct statement or incorrect statement? Both. <laughs> Another puzzle. So you said Tainus actually has no content. Is that true? Okay. So now that we've come to the point where whatever you say is going to be correct and incorrect, so let's try to identify what we're talking about. <laughs> the principle is that whatever you identify within the count within Tainuk, it is c correct. Tainuk definitely incorporates that too. But Tainuk is not dependent on that content. It does not have only because of its content. On the contrary, there is the content because there is only. The, the principle of content that becomes significant, it becomes recognizable only when when you when you draw the oinek into chokma and then further down. Within tainuk itself, content is insignificant, although it is present. Oh, 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 one second, one second, one second. Uh, Rabbi, Let's try, okay, to to get, we'll never, we'll never get out of this unless we really focusing to this and get uh, some kind of a handle on this principle. And let us try to get, to get uh, uh, to some kind of a, a handle on this principle. And um, we will, in order to get the handle to, to understand, we will use a metaphor that is realistic, that we can actually relate to, which we have spoken about very, um, um, uh, very much, a lot, a lot, many different occasions, and uh, almost every day we, we mention this. The principle, what the Gemara says, Odom Shein Lebais in the that a human being without a home is not a human being. Now, let us examine this in you.
When we say that the Tara home is not a human being, does that mean that when he gets a home, he first becomes a human being? If that's when he becomes a human being, so who cares? So not a human being. So I'll be whatever I am without a home. The fact is that when you say a human being without a home is not a human being, it's something which is which which touches him very deeply. Which means that he is already a human being prior to having a home. But do you say without a home is not a human being? So what's the understanding, what's the answer to this? Again, I'll speak, but I'd like you to think along with me, because words alone are not going to, 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 to express it. The principle of a human being is infinitely superior to having a home. Again, let's start from bottom up. What is a home mean? What is the significance of a home? From our perspective, what is the experience of having a home? The experience of having a home is having a definitive place in the world that you can call mine. And I mentioned many times it doesn't mean that you own it um, outright, even if you rent point is that it is your place. Nobody, you cannot be thrown out from this place. This is your place. So having a place in the world, what does this do for a person? That he has a definitive place. His presence in the world has a root, is real. He is not transitory. Without a place, I mentioned many times, if you live in hotels, you eat in restaurants, you can be uh, practically, so to speak, perfectly satisfied, but you're missing the essence of a human being. You're in a hotel, but you don't even be, be belong to you. You're in a restaurant, it's not really your, your table. So what do you have? You have the what's called the functional aspect of a, a bed to sleep in and food to eat. This is such an important principle that a human being is not on a functional level. A human being is on a real level. As demonstrated in the following allegory, that when you, I said many times, you come into a, a, a simch, a chasen, <coughs> and there is food galore, and nobody cares, you're not stepping on anybody's toes, you're not taking up any play, any one place. But you're not a vi an invited guest. You just intruded, see, I see, oh, it's nice, the food is good, let me go into a participate. And nobody cares, it's not that you're stealing somebody, you don't right, eat. As a human being, you feel something missing. What is missing? The food is the same. Functionally, it's exactly the same. But the human being is not a functional presence. The animal is a functional presence. For the animal, it makes no difference. The food the, 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 is what is what he's looking for. The human being is looking. For, it, it needs a place, a, a recognition, a reality. And if he's not recognized, and it's not real then he can't even, he can't even accept the food. It's degrading to him. Why is it degrading? And I want we should think into this on a deeper level than he doesn't have the covert or recognition. It's degrading because it's not the human being, human element. He's not a human being, he's an animal. Right, 
the animal exists on the functional level. The human being exists on the essential level. The animal exists on the on the active. What is an animal? Whatever he does, a human being, his presence, that's his reality first. Mm -hmm. And his activity comes second. <clears throat> so this we discussed many times and I, I think that this these few words should give us a, a handle on, on this principle because it's not new here. <clears throat> <coughs> Therefore, Adam she'en le'bayis in the Adam means precisely this. The sense of being a human being is that he is for real. He is not a visitor. He is not transitory. He is where he belongs and he belongs where he is. And when I say belong, when I say he belongs, means that this is something which he has by virtue, by, by right, not because he fought for it. He fended off <coughs> intruders, he fended off enemies. No, he belongs, it, it's his, by right. Okay, do we understand so far? If you understand that, now you have to go a step further. Who gave him that right? How did he get that right? His creator. How did he get that right? What do you mean by right, it says? We mentioned many, many times. In the animal world, there is also the concept of the turf, of the area that the animal demarcates. I said, this is my turf, like the lions have their, their turf. And any anyone intruding that turf <laughs> is, is at their mercy, not going to come out alive. But there, it is not that this is their right. They fight for it on a daily and a constant basis. There's no right. That's not right. The human being somehow acquired that right, which means the piece of the world, as an element in the world, whatever it is, however we define it, we'll see in a moment. He, and let's forget about world, he has a fundamental right to be. But it's in the world or whatever. He has a fundamental right to be. This fundamental right to be is what but ultimately translated in him being in the world. <laughs> this fundamental right to be, what does it mean? Who has a fundamental right to be? <laughs> what has a fundamental right to be? Is there anything has a fundamental right to be? There is nothing except for the Creator of the world, except for God. Motri Rishi, that's the only thing that has a fundamental right to be. He is not only has a right to be, he, he is the source of all beings. And he provides the, 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 both the presence for everything and, and, and anything that represents him has the right to be. A human being Human neshama, all the way. Vayipa be'ab of nishmas chaim. The neshama, the human neshama, comes from God Himself. This life is a direct emanation, a God emanation, and therefore He has a right to be by virtue of representing, of having that, that fundamental right, fundamental truth. So there's much to speak about this. You can ask me about Shabbat, Mishnah, Zal Kis, or Goyim. But this is the principle. By inception, by design, the human being <coughs> is a godly representation. 
not an an a worldly representation. An animal is part of the world, even though it is really a marvelous thing. It's alive. The world is not the world is physical. It's alive. There's a godly element of life. But still, he is a worldly presence. Like you say many times, that the life in the human, in the animal, is alive to the extent that it that it makes his goof alive. The life of an animal is, is what we call a living body, because primarily his body, he's a living body. So therefore, here it actually fits, in, it fits into the <coughs> into the principles of world. There's a living body. A human being is not a living body. A human being is primarily life. Life in a body. Life in a body is a completely different concept than a living body. His primary presence is the life. And the body is what <coughs> Allows that life to to express itself in the in the physical world and to act in the physical world, but primarily he is the life. Life in a body. So when he doesn't have a house, it means that his primary life. No, 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 no. This is the human being. Which means that by definition. The human being is, is, is reality itself. Not real on account of what he is doing and the actions. He's reality itself. I can point out many times. I'm, I want to get the whole picture so that we can continue on. We, have, we don't have any more of these questions. Uh, the world prior to the human being coming coming on the scene for the first five and a half days the whole world was intact was functioning the animals were roaming around the fish were, were, were <coughs> swimming and the birds were flying and the sun and the moon were functioning everything was there there was no human being now each one of us has inherent innate intelligence. Asking your innate intelligence, what do you think was the value, the significance of the world prior to human being come to the world? Did the world have significance? Did it have, so to speak, a real presence? At that moment, the world had no self-idea, has no value in and of itself. One thing supported the other, was an internal cycle. There was no significance. No significance to his existence. When the human being is placed into the world, this is Odin Betzal Meinikin Musay, representing God in the world. This one human being in the, in, 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 the, in the quagmire of the entire creation of species upon species upon species changed the whole scene. Gave the world, provided the world, a a basic reality. Yes, you stand for something. The world now has something, something there that was called. It has the right to be. It's not there inadvertently. It's there because it belongs there. It has to be. This is something real. Because it represents God. The only reality, fundamental reality, is God. The world was devoid of God. It was all contained within on, on worldly level, in within the worldly uh, structure. It was all precarious. All of a sudden, by a human being entering the scene, 
it became real. It became real. One human being, before anything he did, before he did anything, changed the entire, the entire um, um, view, reality of the world. That is before he did anything. His presence already gave the world a real presence. Why? How did that happen? Because now you have what's called what we said before, life in a body, not a living body. Everything before was living bodies. Now you have something that's life in the body, which is representative real life per se. And, but then he's in the world, so he can, he can affect his presence in the world through his body. But even after that, he is able to affect his presence in the world through his body. What is he primarily? That reality, that life. In the world, his primary presence is that he is able to bring that life into the world. Life in a body means that he is able to, to express and bring this life into the world through his body. The body is able and makes this bridge, makes it possible for him to act in the world. And how does he act in the world? He acting in the world almost almost like into the animal. He eats, he sleeps. But when he eats, it's a different eating. When he's sleeping, it's a different sleeping. Everything that he does has the stamp of his nephesh, a living st a step of life, a step, as we said, a stamp of, of respect, of dignity. Everything that he does has an element in that, that Yes, I'm doing these things in the physical world, but I'm not really into it. I'm really above it. When you say nefesh, yeah, it's a stamp of the nefesh. Um, you define the human being. When you say human being, is it the yid or any human being? Right, and say, leave that over. Okay, do we understand this? This is, this is the principle that we're talking about. This real entity called the human being is real before he expresses himself in the world. The Chochmah, what is Chochmah? They say Chochmah provides for bringing this this nefesh into the in, 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 in practical in the practical in functional in a functional way. The last part, chokma is the means for for nefesh to express. Okay. So now, now we'll go back to to the initial question. Chochma reveals and draws from the nefesh all kinds of different, all kinds of different functional aspects. In what, in what form do these functional aspects exist in the nefesh itself? That would be the question. Is the nefesh looking to be complemented by by Chochma to give it? to give it all of these functional aspects? Or are these functional aspects contained in the nefesh and they are, and they are uh, thirsty, to, you know, they're pressed to get to come out? What is going on? 
So now, after having discussed this, please understand the problem. What is the what is the significant? What is the statement that the human being is for real? For real means that he has a godly element. A godly element means that he is fully, totally self-complementary. He does not need anything to complement him. This is the reality itself. I just want to step off for, for a moment to remind everybody the principle that the Rambam gives us. Without this principle, I'll be talking myself blue and we'll never understand what I'm saying. There's one fundamental principle that needs to be recognized before anything. That existence comes from a first being, from a real existence. Existence is not an accidental evolvement from molecules splitting and atoms flying all over the place. We're talking about reality. There has to be, you know that there is a, a, a first being that is before, before anything, before sake of before Chok, before anything. This principle that is the first being, the Ramu says that this is the beginning, this is the foundation of all thought. Where do we get that, where do we get that recognition? If it's before thought, that means it's before any experience we have. How do we get that recognition from? The answer is that we have a peace of God in us. In our nation. We have a peace of God in, in the form, in, the, in a, in a, uh, <coughs> a functional manner. But nevertheless, we are privy to knowing of the, to, and to be able to relate to the principle that there is a first being. In other words, the way the way we always present it, if we can understand this term, existence comes from existence, not from non-existence. In the world, everything is understood. Existence comes from non-existence. And therefore, you clamor to figure out how did, how did it work out? Why did he come into being? This whole <coughs> uh, fundamental principle is false. Existence comes from existence, not from non existence. Except that existence is is a, um, a, a, a truth, a truth that is that is devoid of any of any structure that gives it support. It is self-supporting completely. Doesn't need a structure. It's the truth itself. Uh, the expression in in by in in, in is that. What's called mechuyev hamitzius? It's a mitzius that is imperative. It is not something that comes that could be not that could not be. That is a first principle. That is a first principle in human thought and certainly in Jewish thought. Without that, you don't have what we correctly identify as intelligence. What is the language there? Mechuyu 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 And, okay, let's leave it, leave it at that. The human being, how, however that happens and what kind of 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 spark or godly spark that he possesses regardless he is privy to that knowledge his awareness of himself begins 
from this knowledge. He does not become aware of himself when he hit a, hits a table and hurts him. He's aware of himself at that point. In other words, his awareness of himself does not begin with himself, it begins with his creator. That is human intelligence. Like we said before, if I would paraphrase this, it means I am here because I belong here. I was invited here. I'm not a foreigner. I'm not an intruder. The owner of everything invited me here. That's that's the primary principle in human being. This is what gives me reality. That is the primary thing. This that there is a first being, and I'm here by His grace, by His invitation, and therefore, whatever I do, wherever I, I represent Him. Okay, I have you with me. This principle truth is not dependent on anything. This is the truth which is given to him by his creator. He doesn't need anything. He does, it's not a composite of many details. The creator says, you are here by my invitation. I'm finished. Nobody can possibly displace me. The question my being This is the primary state of human being. This is the primary nefesh of human being. Then this nefesh comes into a life. The creator had put this nefesh into a body. Now the body is a precarious place. The body cannot relate to that fundamental truth. The body, every being in body asks you, where are you coming from? What is this about? What's the point of that? What's the point of, of the hand? What's the point of the foot? What, what is this all about? So, allegorically speaking, the body is asking the nefesh. Okay, you true being, what do you want from me? The hand wants to know, what, what do you want from me? The foot wants to know, what do you want from me? Not only that, the brain wants to know what you want from me. Why did you come here? You follow the allegory here? You don't seem like you're with me. I may have missed all the stuff. Okay. Anyway, this fundamental truth of the nefesh, we have to understand one principle. I'm, step, I'm stepping off a bit. But just sorry, this what? What do you want? This what do you want from me is how should we work with you? So. Yeah, one second. I'm stepping back. I'm stepping back. There's one thing that I skipped. When we speak about a fundamental truth, let's say Motsu Rishin, Bamsi Kol Nimtsu, Amit is He Motsu. We have to understand what a fundamental truth represents in, in our terms. And again, I'm going to step off in just a little arrogance. A human being has two feet and two hands. And he has all kinds of different functioning organs. All the organs, 613 of them, combine together.
to constitute one real presence in the world. That presence is a fundamental presence. It's able to act and it's able to abstain from action. It's able to speak, it's able to think. It has all possibilities, but not all possibilities independently. All possibilities are presenting one true presence. One is the first one. Look, I'm here as a real, I'm, I'm here by, by godly invitation. And all my faculties are actually focused on, on the derivative of that godly invitation. Whereby I'm able to, I'm able to rest, I'm able to, I'm able to contemplate, I'm able to go back into the godly realm and come back into the world. And in the world I can function, I can act, I can go to work, I can dig ditches, and I can build houses. I can do all kinds of different things. I can transform the world in my image. The world? <laughs> what? Yes, I can build a home, a house. I can build a house that you wouldn't even dream of if not for the human being. You wouldn't dream the comfort and the beauty and the grace that I can put into a house. <laughs> it has no function at all. Not part of the world. It's an Ashama thing. It's a human thing. And all that I'm capable of doing. Why am I capable of doing this? I'm capable of doing this because my, my true presence here represents unlimited reality. And all of these things that I'm, that I'm, I'm able to do is just a, a triviality, a trivial means of representing in the world that truth of the knowledge. No matter what you do in the world, it, you'll never really capture the, the realness of Life itself, the godly life itself, you'll never be able to capture. You can represent it in, in some subset, some lonely level, limited level. What you do, when you do capture the nefesh, is in this one thing, that my capabilities are unlimited. The categories are what? Are unlimited. Unlimited. You can't say, I have to live this way. I, I can live in every climate. I can adjust and adapt to any change of, um, in a change of atmosphere. I can adapt to any culture. I can learn any language. because I'm independent of all that. I'm not a body, a living body. I'm a soul in a body. I'm a truth in a body. I can, I can recognize anything. What's going on? No, 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 without getting control, getting lost. The essence has everything and has nothing. The essence is above having anything, and it has nothing, and it has everything. Whatever you draw from the essence, like I said, I can learn any language. I can learn, because, because in my essence I can learn this language. 
Now that I have this language, I'm above it. I can learn anything. The essence has nothing by virtue of not having anything, it has everything. That's in that, the essence. This oinig that we're talking about is that, that truth. This is oinig like this is the reality itself. The great miracle is that Chochma, which is, um, as I said many times, it's, it's, a, it's a phenomenal quality. That Chochmah can relate and prove to, and it can recognize this truth of the Nefesh. And at the same time, identify everything that can possibly be drawn from. Drawn from is here meaning going down into going the Going down into the world. Chochma is that link. Chochma says, this is this fundamental truth. And as a result of the fundamental truth, I can have un unlimited languages. I can express myself in, in unlimited different ways. And I can do unlimited different things. And do it as a human being, doing it in a, in a living manner. Chochma can bring the, this oinek into everything, every, everywhere. Because this oinek comes from this uh, 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 fundamental truth, which has everything. Now we understand what it means, it has everything. More correctly, if I could, it does not have, it does not not have anything. It doesn't have anything. It does not not have anything. There's no such thing that, that, that he doesn't have. But to say that he has, he has nothing. Because we're talking about the first being, we're talking about a godly reality. Again, we must never forget the principle that whatever we're talking about, we're talking about a, a being coming from being. Chochmah, Chochmah identifies language, identifies all other things. Garbage, he doesn't learn language on the fly. He learns language because he has an effort that can learn language. And uh, everything else as well. This is the meaning that Chachma draws the Oinig from the Nefesh. So the answer to your question, Baruch, the Nefesh has the Oinig. And that Oinig, as we said, it is has nothing and has everything. The Chachma takes that Oinig and is able to relate that oinig to everything. Nefesh is not everything. Nefesh is nothing. Chochmah is able to relate that, that oinig to everything, which means it already can translate the word oinig in what's called Zman or Mokim, on the world level. But there also it's everything, which means there is not a specific thing. But from this, everything you can go on and draw all kinds of different things. Can I, can I say something? Go ahead. What initiates, what impels, better word, Chachma to step in and, and do this? All right. <sighs> The truth is that this is off topic. This is what? Off topic. Off topic. <laughs> because you're not okay. you're not l trying to figure out how to duplicate God's work, right? Hello. The 
sure not, but, right. but it's, it, it, it all it's one I, it will not, uh, see, this is the important thing which I'm trying to, okay, I don't mind discussing it, but I just want you to understand. This will detract from the understanding of the point that we learned. How so? Because this will give you the sense that this is all happening on a functional level. But it's not a functional level. This is a truth element. It has to happen. It, it happens because it Hashem happen. wants it to happen. There's a godly element in this. This is the whole... This is the, uh, this is the, the, the stumbling block that we have. And, and I, I can't blame anybody in, in our world for that. But this is the, this is the situation. We cannot understand an Indian unless we know the whole structure. Mistake, because the structure takes away from your understand, from your nishoma understanding. We are trying to understand with our innate wisdom, with intelligence, not by visiting the the, 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 the chambers. By visiting the chambers, you're not get, you're not going to understand anything. You're going to know the structure. The whole print point of this is why is the Rebbe going to this? To reveal your chokhmah. To help you relate and sense, oh yeah, I think I have that sense. Yes, I withdraw the question. God bless you. Sometime in the future, we will attempt to be able to talk about this because there is clearly there's a godly element in this too. We spoke about it a little bit because I was drawn into this rotsin and all that, but this will will. There's, there's time for everything. Yes, Ruben. Yeah, 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 just to put a little bit closer on it, at least for myself, it's possible. So the mistake in which I, in my description, that uh, the other students are, are sort of journeying towards the goal, Masha Enkein Oneg has already arrived. The mistake in that is that I was defining Oneg in terms of having everything, but really only gives Edson, which is higher than that. It can be defined by its components. It has everything. So that's my mistake in saying that, for so I understand now, that only is we very really, uh, uh, reached the, the place of the Jewish as, as opposed to other spheres. That the mistake of that is that I'm defining only as a compositor of many components. But so AK, what we understand now is that only is much higher than detail components. So that's my mistake. No, or do you understand what we said? Yeah, I think it's so. an important main thing. What's the difference? What your mistake was? No, that gives me clarity on the country. All right, good, good, good. All right, let's go. Right. Try to identify a, yeah, good, a fresh, good. then yeah, yeah, one good, that no, good, good, good. visit all the mistakes. Yeah, it's good, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. Rabbi, can I ask a question? The mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, it's coming. I want to believe everything you say is true. And I sense that it is true. But in practicality in this world there is no such thing as ownership as they say as they say freedom isn't free we had to con the, the, the Europeans conquered this land from the Indians and they have to and, and, well, can and, you stop can you stop yes. you have to go on in the, in okay. the whole history okay okay well, so well enough said enough okay said. and, and Shmuel. we Shmuel. all right you have to just your turf okay bye The error in what you are presenting is very simple. Does the world belong to the Indians or to God? To God. If it belongs to God, there is ownership. By God, he decreed. 
God guarantees your ownership, my ownership, and everybody else. That's then, it. Then, then God can take away, take it away. God does not take it away. God gave it to He gave it. Boris Mosul in New York. To be continued. I think what he's trying to say is that God took away the ownership from the Indians and gave it to the Europeans. And he can take it away from us too. He still owns the world. Is that what you think? It's set up by a world that decided. Yeah, but so what? So what? Um, so much for the Indians. <laughs> well, how about the Israelis, you know, the Americans? You know? Shmuel, did you understand my answer to you? I don't understand. Don't you said there was no such thing as ownership. It's all, it's all convention. Yes, it's. So yes. I answer to you. That's not true, because I don't God, see it. I, okay, I, I don't see the truth. You don't see it. Answer. That's 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 I don't your, your that's answer. your problem. But you ask me a question, I'm answering the answer. Well, you were, your question, your question, yeah, up above, exactly right. That's why I said the human being primarily is who created him, not what he is. That's what, that's what defines a human being. That distinguishes him from everything else in the world. But if nobody recognizes your humanity, okay, what good does it do how much pride and self-respect and, and humanity you have? They come okay, into your house, enough, they break enough, into your house, enough, enough and, they, and they enough, take you off the camps. Enough said. You do your thing. You put on film in your little chamber. You do your own thing. Nobody has to recognize what you do. That's what defines a, a, a human being. He has two in to himself. The Gemara says, the red quote from the Gemara, High of Odom Lema Bishwili Nibra Hoila. Every individual human being not only is, has the right, but is obligated to recognize the world was created for myself. Whatever I can contribute in the world, that's what the world was created for. Because I have a God in the show, and therefore I have a real presence. Okay. All right, uh, so we are essentially on top of page Lamed Beis, but we will start on the last two words on page Lamed Aleph, which we may went through, but because of this uh, presentation, hopefully we can make it uh, more um, accessible, we'll be able to relate to it a little bit better. Before that, we said that Oinek and Chochmah are one and the same thing. <coughs> As demonstrated by the fact that in order to have Oinek, let's say Oinek from a home, Oinek from anything, in order to have Oinek, there is a, the prerequisite for that is that it be done exactly according to the way his Chochmah defines it. Not according to its functionality, but according to the way his Chochmah defines it. Which shows that the Chochmah actually represents the Oinek. It's one and the same thing, except, okay, now, if it's the same thing, what then is the difference? Except, he says, Rak, except, that in Chochmah, in Chochmo, there this oina comes behal bosho. It comes, so to speak, imbued and dressed in some Indian. What is the oina about?
as we said in this introduction today, that the initial oinig, the true oinig, has everything. And the reason that he has oinig is because he has the truth. And truth is, is very much a very delightful thing. When he is misanic in a specific thing, then he finds the truth in that specific thing. Not the truth in that specific thing to the exclusion of all others. But the principle is that in everything there is an element of truth. This is the pshat that he mis and Bob Halbos of Eze in by Moshe Humisan. What is the oinik from? Meaning, how do you identify the truth over here so that you have oinik in here? Whereas in the oinik itself, there is no by Moshe Humisan. There is the 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 truth itself. And this is what Chokma provides. It's the same thing, it's mamash the oinig itself. And yet, it provides for halbosh. Provides for it. Vehu shebo bitsi or ezadob. And that is what comes, and it is that it comes bitsi or ezadob. It comes in a form of something. Some kind of a form. The form is, is in, the form is a kind, some kind of a structure, some kind of a of an activity. But it is the chokhme, it is the the oine coming in the form. And what is the form that can capture the oinuk, that can that can house, so to speak, and, uh, and accept the oinuk? Shazehu hadvar chokma hoatz mis behoinian hazeh. Okay, here again we have very 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 sharp terms, and we must try to understand. This is the Var Chokhmah who adds me to the Inyan Azeh. Shibozehu Misamach. Essentially, you already made the point. The Var Chokhmah who adds me means the essential Chokhmah. Like we give in, in, in the example of the house, of the home. In the home we have identified a very interesting thing. You would think that what would make a person happy and satisfied and have oinic, it is a home that provides for all his functional needs without any restrictions. I will give him the oinic. But then we see that that's not entirely true, because if you provide him a person a, a personal dwelling, in the Empire State Building, he will not have oinik. He won't be able to relate to it, because that was not designed by his chokmo atzis, what he defines, what he considers a home. He doesn't have that quality functionally. He can provide for everything. He can have a different, a different dining room for breakfast, for lunch, for snack, and for supper. And he, uh, <laughs> unlimited, so he functionally unlimited, and he is totally dissatisfied.
because it is not this, this identity of this homer homer did not come from his chokhmah atzmis how his chokhmah defines what this truth of a home is and if and if it is defined by his chokhmah at whatever level his chokhmah is maybe he perceives a small home very cozy and this he will be happy he will have oinak he will be happier in this small home than in the Empire State Building it's an amazing thing why? because the Chochmah is reflective of the oinak of the oinak and the Let's follow through. The Oinek nefesh is not functionality. The Oinek nefesh, if we should speak on Chochmah level, is accommodation to the truth of my presence in the world. That's what Oinek nefesh is. In the small home, wherever I look, I identify with it. There is my reality there. Accommodation to my reality. This is the only glance. This is why Chochmah reflects that. This is the, the tremendous insight of Chochmah. Chochmah says, you're not interested in, in, in big rooms, small rooms. You're interested in something that accommodates, that relates to the, to, to the reality of the nefesh, the way, the way I experience my life. Why? Because my life is for real. This is why I have oinat. And this is the function of chokhmah, to be able to identify it in, in an environmental level. Level. It is way below that which is in the nefesh itself. But if the nefesh is mislabish and the goof is supposed to come into the world, Chochmi is able to find the accommodation for that one. Mm-hmm. In order to accommodate the various things that I have to do today, we have to interrupt now, and everybody else as well. And uh, maybe we can do it. There's, there's, uh, there's a psychological technique that was developed a few years ago. Just one second. Okay, have a good day. There's a therapy, NLP. Neuro linguistic program. That's, you know, yeah, that's in the seventh. I'm sick yeah, and okay, tired of right. training. Who is so, yeah, okay, cool. okay, so so so, so it's same an hardware. insidious. No, it's different. It's an right. evil. It's an yeah, evil thing. Are you getting though. it through the guys on you know, use, use I'm, 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 I'm getting it. I'm getting it from the guy on on on